gone from AEW. And well, she's been gone for a while. Apparently last night, this all hit the fan. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it was... She said, you know, she, you know, talked about her issues in AEW. And she's got every right to talk about her issues. Um, I read it. It didn't, it didn't bother me. I mean, see, here's one of the things. Okay. It is inherent that the more you sign people, um, that you're, you know, there's going to be people on the roster. And she was one of them, you know, who was not getting matches. And, you know, I mean, in the old days, okay, in the old days, there were probably a lot of guys. I mean, I even know guys in AEW who sort of talk like this. And it's funny because they're not like this, but they were programmed to be like this and going like, oh, it's the greatest thing in the world. You know, you get paid. You're getting paid a guaranteed check. Even if you don't have to work, even if you don't even come in, you're getting your, your weekly check. This is, you know, they, in the old days, people would just think this is the greatest thing in the world you're getting paid without working without you know but you know the modern guys you know they want to work they want to be on tv they want to have good matches you know it's it's very different mentality and so they're going to be really frustrated it's why people leave wwe you know that they aren't getting what they perceive as you know fair opportunity and them you know and with AEW, i mean the thing is they've got a lot they got a lot of guys and they use a lot of guys. I mean, like, WWE uses the same guys every week on every show for the most part, right? And there's, you know, a few people in and out. But you got the base, basically fairly small rosters on Raw and SmackDown that are, are used over and over and over again every single week. AEW will have, you know, a million guys at ringside. And, you know, guys are on maybe every second or third show, maybe even more than that. Um so it's tough. I mean, I mean, it's like they, they try to get, like, they get a ridiculous number of guys on TV in those two hours, but they have so many guys on the roster that a lot of people, and Swole was one of them, just, they just, no, they weren't being used. And so, anyway, you know, it's it's going to happen. There's going to be, the more people come in, um, the more it's, there's you know, the more people are going to not have the time, um, especially now when... Um, you know, Dark Elevation used to be, like, super long, and now you only got one hour because of Rampage, so you don't have the one hour before and the one hour after. Of course, you do have Rampage, which is higher profile and everything, so that does get some more, but that's usually for top guys. You know, for the ones who are going to be frustrated, like at the swole level, there's less TV time for them than there, or, or, or match time for them than there was, you know, before Rampage. So she's going to be frustrated. She was frustrated, and then... Uh, you know, Tony Khan. I mean, I you know, it wasn't a it wasn't a good tweet to do to um, say that. You know, it, I mean, the thing is, it's like he said that like he let her contract expire, and because she wasn't a good enough wrestler, and I mean, she wasn't. I mean, it's like so in that sense. I mean, it doesn't come off well doing that. He probably, sh if I'm sure if he thought it out, he shouldn't have said that. I think that there was the feeling. I mean, the key thing was is that I think he took it as, um, you know, kind of an accusation. And there was insinuation there, you know, about the race being part of it. And I think that that probably struck him bad. And I can get that because, you know, you can be, you can say a bunch of bad things about somebody you know, you, you know, this and that. But when you call him a racist, for the most part, and I didn't see directly say it, but there was the insinuation that, that they don't get enough time. And I know people brought up that when Jade, you know, and it's, it's very clear that, you know, in her mind, you know, that, that Jade's getting all this time that she's not getting. And she probably thinks she's a better wrestler than Jade because she's more experienced than Jade. But, you know, whatever, you know, Jade's the one they called and... and um, you know, I didn't think, you know, I wasn't happy that personally that Jade went to the finals of the tournament. But, you know, one of those things is, is because of that, you're gonna end up sometimes booking people like, you know, that stronger because people are going to get on your case, like all white wrestling and all that stupidity, you know, and you don't, you know, it's just, it's total bullshit. Um, and you know, I mean, I just remember like on day one of the, um, 
of the before they ever had TV. I was at, at the Chicago the 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 first all out in Chicago, and there was a question from the press from somebody at the press, and it was just something along the lines of to Tony, you know, what percentage of your television time are you going to devote to people of color? And he didn't really have a good answer, and it's kind of like we haven't had our first TV show yet. You want me to like, you know, like come up with a percentage of? It's like you know, it's like. We don't know who's going to draw. We haven't done a TV show. We don't know who the fans are going to like. You know what I mean? It's like it's going to be what it's supposed to be. The guys who are over are going to get more TV time. The guys who aren't are going to get less, whoever they are. You know what I mean? It's not like it's not like we've seen somebody, you know, if, if it's not, you know, like we used to see guys in, in WWE, right, that would get really, really over. And WCW was even more worse that they didn't want to get over. So then they start burying them. And I haven't really seen that in AEW, that a guy gets super over that they don't want to get over. Usually they're then, they're, they usually do a pretty good job of following up, but whatever. Um, and it's kind of like, I think that from that point on, you know, you just kind of have between women and, and that, you know, it's it's that weird thing where even if they don't draw, we kind of have to push them because, you know, you get knocked if you don't. And it's just a weird thing, especially for a, you know, for a company that's that's new and everything that you have, you know, instead of the pressure to draw the biggest ratings and draw the biggest, you know, buy rates and draw the most fans possible, you know, which you would think would be the ultimate goal and to make and all that, the, you know, you, you, you have people who don't care about any of that and don't care if you go out of business, but they, they just feel you must, you must have like, you know, like 26% of the time for this and, you know, whatever. And it's, it's just like, I think it's just kind of ridiculous. Okay. But, you know, again, um, so maybe that's where the sensitive part comes in. I don't know. Uh, Leo Rush got really mad. I guess Tony and Leo Rush had a talk. Leo Rush was calmed down. He's fine. Um, but yeah, it was an, it was a, you know, it wasn't a, a smart tweet or anything like that. It caused a lot of controversy. You know, if, if he didn't say anything, um, nobody would be talking about it. It'd be like, you know, for a day and then, you know, there'd be another new story. You know, people talk about something else. So it dragged it out for another day and everything like that. And, um, you cannot have an intelligent discussion of this subject on Twitter. I mean, and, and when I read people's things, I was like, like, I mean, I mean, no matter what you say in so, so few characters, I'm reading it just going like, oh, you don't understand the subject. You don't understand the mentality of any of these people. You know, you don't understand where, he, you know, the, where, where someone calling, you know, like people jumping on you for being a racist is going to get you mad. I mean, like it shouldn't, it shouldn't. Okay. But it's going to, and maybe, he, maybe he learned from this that just ignore it. Um, you know, and, and whatever it's probably you know it's it is probably something that everyone who runs a wrestling company right now should ignore all of that stuff you really should but um you know they're human beings and human beings uh you know if if you don't think you're a racist and it's such an ugly term you know um and so you know you you lash out and you get mad and it's like is that but yeah he should just look no you know nobody intelligent would think that and the people who you know like let's face it the people who um want to say that you know and we're all happy at leo rush i'm sure they were mad at leo i mean they were mad at freaking um powerhouse hobbs you know for saying that like you know i i've been here i'm happy you know, I've had opportunities. The guy never had an opportunity anywhere. He's been around forever. And, you know, I mean, like, uh, look, I I could say with Hobbs, I'll, I'll say that, you know, it's, it's like he's sort of a victim of the sense of there's so many guys because I do think he, you know, he's pretty, I mean, it's like, I'm not saying he's pretty good, but he could be used more. But I could say that about Ricky Starks. I could say that about, there's so many guys I could say that about, but it's like there's only so much TV time to go around. And, uh, man, I, I, you know, it's like that's what happens when you have such a big roster. But he's happy, and people are mad at him for being happy. You know, and it's like he's happy, and you know, Swole. You know, she's not working there anymore. She's got her complaints, and I mean, you know, that's her story. And you know what? If she's unhappy, or or she has certain things, she has the right to be. I mean, I'm not. I read her thing, and it's like 
when I read it, it was like, you know, I mean, I read the thing about like, oh, you know, we don't have, you know, we need writers or, you know, she didn't quite say we need writers, but it was just kind of like, you know, there's no writers here and, you know, all this. And it's like, here I am thinking, you know, after watching this program for two plus years, I'm thinking that the one thing that AEW has proven because with, you know, I mean, they're almost, you know, they're almost at WWE's level under 50. And with guys, they're, they may even be ahead. And if not, they're close. You know, and at house shows, they're, they're, they've actually been ahead the last two months, which is amazing. And in New York and Chicago, they're ahead. And that's amazing. It should not be like that. But they are, okay? And I was, okay, so, so with all the advantages WWE has between tenure and star power and, you know, you know, you know the, and things like that, um, and also focusing on on the same guys week after week, which AEW doesn't do. They focus on so many more guys. Um, you know, WWE should be way ahead, and they're not. And one of the advantages AEW has that, I mean, I would argue to my death is better promos because they're not scripted. And yes, you know what? There is there are people who will do better with scripted promos. Um, you know, without a doubt, there's there's there there is advantage to some people, and maybe she's even one of them. I don't know, but I think that overall, when you go in there, and that's one of your complaints, it's like, you know what? One of the things I think AEW showed, you know, the the, the two things, my the, the two the two things that, like from AEW that that I think that they've shown in the last couple of years is number one is that you don't need all those writers. And promos are better without the writers. Promos are better when the guys speak what they want to speak. And they just have, like, they know what they have to get across. And they're speaking as themselves. I think that they're, that's, the promos are far superior. Um, you don't have people micromanaging every single move. Can I do this? Can I do that? And I just go out there. It's like, you're out there. Six minutes. This is the finish. These are some spots you want in the match. But go do your match and come up with it yourself. You know what I mean? And, you know, you got agents to help you. But they're not. It's not the same thing. Thing. Um, you know, I think that that's, you know, those are more, you know, those are things that AEW does better. So it's like, yeah, it's not WWE, but WWE isn't necessarily, you know, I mean, um, they're not the gold standard. No one's the gold standard. Both can learn from the other side, but the stuff that AEW does better don't, you know, when I saw that, it's like that. So that was one thing that she said that I didn't agree with. But her story is her story and, and she has the right to say it. And I don't got a problem with it at all. Um, you know, and I, I understand where Tony's coming from, but he shouldn't have said it. And he, he needs to ignore it from this point on. I mean, there's going to be people jumping on him for stupid ass shit because it's, if there's a toxic fan base and it, I, I know it goes both ways. I don't, for whatever reason, you and I, especially me only see it one, the one way because, you know, I can say, and it's just happened a million times. I can do the exact same thing, right? About WWE, WWE had a, WWE on Friday, on, on, on uh, Christmas Eve had a good number. And I wrote WWE had a good number for Christmas Eve. And people are just like, you hate WWE? How dare you say that about WWE? I said, I said they had a good number. You know, it's like, that's how ridiculous it is. How just completely stupid this is. But you got to ignore those people. And, and you just got to do your job. And, you know, like, again, with AEW, they're growing. You know what I mean? So those people's opinions don't mean shit because they're growing. So just look at it that way. Look at as long as your numbers are growing. I mean, you can learn from people who are balanced for sure. Um, there's always stuff to learn. Nobody knows it all ever. Um, but the people who don't know shit and don't want to know shit and all that, you're not going to learn nothing from them. So just let it be. Who cares? Um, you know, so... Um, if your numbers are going down, you know, don't get defensive. Learn from that too, and and figure out. You know, it's like, yeah, AEW can do AEW can do stuff to attract more women, thirty five to forty nine years old, and even eighteen to thirty four. Absolutely, figure something out. And I know that they know this, and I know that they're trying. You know, and, it does, and you can't snap your fingers and have it happen. But that is a weak spot for them. I mean, there's, you know, there's, you know, again, they're not, they're they're far from perfect. But, you know, they've, they've grown, 
and um, they've grown in in name value this year a lot, a lot more homes, way more homes are watching than ever before, which was a big problem in year one. In, in, in year one is that they could grow people within the home, but they weren't growing homes. Now they're growing homes. Uh, you know, now, you know, they're going to be back on prime time. I mean, things are, you know, things aren't perfect, but things are looking good. And uh, just go with that. Things are looking good. Be happy. All right. This Noah show.